The subject of today's episode is a form of psychological torture that has been linked to a loss of self, loss of how time works, physical, visual, and audio hallucinations, the inability to sleep without pills, decline mental cognition, psychotic breaks, and the all-consuming fear of the color white, each of which that can persist long after the torture is over, sometimes being permanent. It has been condemned by the Geneva Convention as an enhanced interrogation technique as it is an extreme form of solitary confinement used mostly in the Middle East, but also seen in South America. And all thanks to who else but the CIA. Today, we cover white room torture. That was a bit like my rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kevin Young. I'm Don Hergen. And this is torture. Oh, fuck. That's the one description that I think I kept thinking. I was like, I hope he leaves the pause long enough <laughs> for me to jump in with that. It's like, as soon as halfway through the second sentence, like, this sounds. Yeah. Oh, fuck. So how you been, man? What's going on? Uh, not a lot. Work, 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 work. You know, Every, everybody in the house is very busy. You know, well, that's good. It's always better when people are busy than just fucking slacking around doing nothing. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, true enough. I'm trying to get those other couple of things off the ground. You know, working on the the effects pedals things and D and D. Trying to get some D and D going soon. Yeah. Hopefully. Played a little bit with my cat. Didn't, we didn't actually play D and D. Uh, we played um, a one shot, "The Witch Is Dead." You ever played that? No. So um, a witch hunter. So you're an animal. Well, you're probably the DM, but all the kids are the animals, and uh, they're the familiars to a witch who was murdered by a witch hunter. And you have to go into a village, find the witch hunter, steal his eyes, and bring them back to the witch in order to bring her back. And it can be as filthy or as clean as you want. I try to keep it a little cleaner for the kids, but uh, it's a, it's a real fun one shot to, to play. Good. It's going to turn into a two shot. They had to stop playing because we had you know lunch and all that shit. So it's own it's its own little system, like or like one of those one page RPGs, yeah. or is it literature? Right. No, cool. no, it's it's a it's a little one page RPG. You um you roll a d10. For everything and you have mm -hmm. the, every everybody has uh like one magic trick they can do and then you have to roll for and, and there's danger so if your danger gets to a a, a 10 you die and every All time right. you every time you fuck up a roll or uh anything like that you add to your danger but you can get rid of the danger by either solving a problem or running away cool <laughs> like real life yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get into it. Um, so, white room torture is, as I said, a form of solitary confinement in which everything is white. It's close to the same shade of white as possible. I mean, uh, ceilings, floors, walls, which are also uh, as smooth as possible and padded. So there's no like noise echo and no nice textures to feel. They want everything to kind of feel the same. Um, a very small amount of furniture, if any, like one bed and that's it. Your clothes, the food, which is just like white rice on a disposable white plate, um, which is unseasoned because uh, they don't want to stimulate your sense of taste or smell. Heat and the sponsors. Uh, neon lights placed strategically so there's no shadows uh, le lights are left on for about for 24 hours a day so it helps with sleep deprivation uh, and a lot of the time the room was kept below freezing 
just just for that extra little little punch. Uh, now here here's what got me is if you need because no toilet or anything like that. So if you needed to use the bathroom, you'd have to slip a piece of white paper under the door of your cell, and a guard would come get you while wearing padded shoes. They're also all in white, and um, you were not allowed to make a sound. And they would es- escort you to an all-white bathroom. And then when you're done, they take you back. Why not go in the corner and hope it changes the color of the room a little bit? That's the same thing I talked to my wife. I was like, just, at, at know, some point, at some point, if you want to break it up, you're, you're gonna sh- you're, you're gonna shit in the corner yeah. and just start smearing it, or you're gonna bite your finger till it bleeds, so you get some red or something. You pick your nose and put it on the wall, so there's some green or yellow something. You're gonna do something to break up the monotony of it. Yeah, they'll probably beat the living shit out of you though for doing that. Oh, so. I, I would imagine they would. You'd probably do it once or twice, and then they'd make sure you never did it again. Be worth it though, just because somebody has to clean that up. Yeah. Uh, well, you're probably the one cleaning it up at gunpoint, I would imagine. That's a fair point. Actually, yeah. I didn't see anything in anywhere about how they would handle that, but I can't imagine that doing something like that would not get a very aggressive response. Yeah, uh, it's a, I don't know. I don't know if you'd if you chance it or not. You know. I think everybody would would get to the point where they chance it once. Yeah, that's fair. Like, what's the worst they can do? I mean, what's the worst they can do? They already got me logged in here, and then and then you find out, and you probably never do it again. Um, yeah, if they uh, went, near, went near my fingernails, I'd be like, nope, well, I'll clean that up. Thanks very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll take anything as long as they don't like. Yeah, start pulling out fingernails. Then I might be no. Uh, try to bash your foot with a hammer. Be like, oh, mm-hmm. no. Yeah. Uh. I don't know about you, but anytime I ever thought about like what would happen if I went to solitary confinement, I think, man, it doesn't really feel like it would be that bad. You're you're alone. I like being alone, so you're alone. Mm. But I like being alone with my phone or alone with a yeah, TV yeah. <laughs> or or something or a book or something to do. But that that's not uh, the case when you're yes, alone. I mean, you're oh, yeah. yeah, you're alone. Yeah, alone, and we are. Hate to say it, we are animals of, uh, we are social animals that like to be around. As much as some of us hate actually doing it, we do need that interaction. Uh, yeah, just think like, like when I had to have my couple of weeks of isolation around yeah. Christmas time because of COVID, uh-huh. and like the fact that I had the computer here and stuff was the only. Yeah, thing like you know, I mean, it kind of kept you from going insane. Other than that, I'd say I would just be as bored as all hell. <laughs> from here to literally two feet away from me, uh-huh. that's all I had, you know. And well, I'm lucky I never had yeah. to go into to real, real quarantine for anything. I, I, it was it was stay home, but never stay in a room by yourself. Uh, mm. We never, I never got that. My my son did, but I never did. Yeah, anytime it's ever like, man, if I go into it's like if I just went on a fucking murder spree and I got thrown in prison, be like, I'll only go if you put me in solitary confinement, but only if you let me have my phone. <laughs> and I don't think that that's how it would work. I don't think that's how it work. No, no. no. <laughs> but so, so oh, my, yes, of course, you call the shots here, sir. <laughs> like, I'll tell. I'll show you where all the bodies are. But I want. I want my phone with internet access and Wi-Fi. And it's like, mm, fuck you. <laughs> that's not that's not how it's gonna work uh so but but for most people they think solitary confinement they think not that bad um it's it's a lot better than being beaten um but according to the yeah. studies and the people that we've heard of um that we've looked up uh that experience is actually the exact opposite as far as uh the beatings being worse so Let's get to some of the places this actually happened in. Um, the majority of this, at least, you know, famously, is a notorious correctional institute known as Evan Prison. At least, I think it's Evan, E V I N, but it's Middle Eastern, so it could be Evin, even or Evin or something. Yeah, yeah. But we're just gonna call it Evan because that's what it looks like. 
uh, the Evan prison in Tehran, Iran, used mostly for political prisoner, prisoners, journalists, activists, and artists. Anyone that would have anything bad to say about the authority and the government. This takes us to a, a man by the name of Amir Fakarovar. I think that's how you pronounce it. Again, I'm hor- I am horrible with Mideastern names. Horrible with them. I'm horrible. I'm horrible with Irish names. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's horrible with Irish names because they're not spelled the way they're supposed to be. No, no, no. They're spelled okay. It's just we just yeah we just have some really weird weird pronunciations for things. Yeah, I was kind of watching a short video and um, I know there's an interview done where reportedly he had 50 bones in his body broken while being tortured. Yeah. As well, uh, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, so okay, so he at a student as a student, uh, age seventeen. He was uh, arrested in 1999 for speaking out critically about the government, and he would spend the next five years going from one prison to another, being physically tortured, and like he said, um, beaten to the point where he had about 50 of his bones broken. Uh, But then he gets to Evan Prison, and he spends the next eight months enduring white room torture. his case was documented by Amnesty International in 2004, the same year he was tortured. Uh, he called it the worst torture out of all of them. So out of all the beatings, uh, all the God knows what else they did to him, that eight months of being stuck in a white room by himself with no stimulation was the worst of all of it. It's a long time, like It's a really long ass time. <laughs> yeah, man, you don't think about how long eight months is... Uh, until you think about how long eight months is of the same monotonous. I mean, that's eight months with lights on. Uh, you never know what time it is. It's no, there's no windows. It's not like you can just like look outside and see the trees. There, it, it, you're in a box, a white well, like, yeah, box. It, yeah, like I don't know if like how many people here have like the likes of like an ensuite toilet or something. But, like if you're to go into there. Just kind of sit and look at a corner for ten minutes, and then imagine that for eight months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And these aren't and these aren't like huge rooms where you could wander around. These are prison cells, pretty much, that have been completely encased. So you got a little area to just maybe walk back and forth to pace pace a line. But these aren't you know you're not in a fucking mansion. You're in a tiny fucking hole you know box. Um, He has a quote where he said, I was there for eight months, and after those months, I couldn't remember my father and my mother's face. When they released me from that prison, I was not a normal person. Now, he, uh, I don't know if you read anything about what he did after that. He actually got out of that prison. Um, He was there for eight months. They transferred him to another prison, because apparently they get prison leave. Yeah, they get furlough or something. Yeah, they yeah. get like furloughs. He got a, furloughed a holidays for, for Christmas yeah. or some shit. Yeah, well, he got furloughed for New Year's. New Year's, uh, it said. Yeah. And then he got sent to another prison, and then he got furloughed again so he could go take his college tests. It's like they let you out to go take exams. Uni, like, yeah, yeah, they let him out to go take exams, and that's when he kind of fled the country. Jumped on an airplane. I saw that. Yeah, he, re- he refused Edinburgh. to return. Yeah. To, uh, yeah, and then he came over here and uh, told the world kind of what's going on. And I know there's a lot of videos of him on like Newsmax and Fox News, which you know, take that for what you will. Uh, I use the word news loosely with those, but yeah, telling everybody about what was going on. A lot of people didn't believe him. Of course. It's not exactly the sort of thing that's typically reported here. Though. Thing, I didn't, I don't exactly watch the news, but it's not exactly something I've seen myself yeah. floating about. You know, um, I guarantee you there's going to be loads of people who know all about that. But like, yeah, I, I never heard of anything about this until you told I started me. Look, yeah, I started <laughs> so, look at, looking up on it. Yeah, I didn't know what the yeah. fuck it was either until I started looking up torture methods and white room torture was there. I was like, is that what I think it is? And I read about it. I was like, it's exactly what I think it is. And that's f- fucking horrible. 
So in a telephone call to Human Rights Watch 2004, the Iranian, Iranian journalist Ibrahim Nabavi, who was another political prisoner in Evan, said, quote, Since I left Evan, I have not been able to sleep without sleeping pills. It is terrible. The loneliness never leaves you long after you are free. Quote, free. This is why we call it white torture. They get what they want without having to hit you. They know enough about you to control the information that you get. They can make you believe that the president has resigned, that your wife has, that they have your wife, that someone you trust has told them lies about you. You begin to break, and once you break, they have control, and then you begin to confess. Even if you have no one to confess to. Even, like yeah, the, well, that's the thing is a lot of these people don't have anything like – journalists and activists and and artists they, they 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 just would arrest you throw you in a room and say confess to what you did it's like literally you didn't do anything you're just you're just saying uh we need to bring down the regime because it's you know inhumane or whatever and they want you to admit that you did all this other shit so they mm. can keep you in prison and it doesn't look like they're just keeping you in prison because you're speaking out that you're keeping you in prison because you're a criminal so, right, right, right. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, because they can't be seen by their good citizens that, uh, you know, they might be torturing somebody just because they like art or music, yeah, um, yeah. Well, how how dare you like something, yeah, <laughs> or how you how dare you speak out, which is that's kind of that's kind of becoming more commonplace to get, uh, maybe not tortured for speaking out, but definitely chastised yeah it's, it's just there seems to be an awful lot of places where you're just not allowed to um let's say yeah uh, like say anything if you get me yeah, like well, you already said the phrase speak out <laughs> don't, don't, don't know where i'm going with that <laughs> if it, things keep going the way they're going over here we might be there a lot shorter than we know no I, i'm sorry if things keep going the way they're going everywhere god forbid you ever say anything yeah Jeez, offended yeah. <laughs> So offended. Sick them in a white room for a couple of hours. Got shut them up. Yeah, Middle East wasn't the only place this happened. It's, it's, it's kind of most famously, but uh, it was also used in Venezuela. Uh, underneath the Sebens, Sebens headquarters, the Bolivarian Intelligence Service in the city of Caracas, there's a place called La Tumba or The Tomb. We're prisoners of subject. Say. Yeah. <laughs> what could La, what La could La Tumba mean? <laughs> Why don't they serve a La Big Max? What's that? <laughs> uh, the prisoners there are subject to white torture. Uh, the cells are two by three meters, so six foot seven inch by nine foot ten inch. So again, just a small room. Mm. Um. Uh, it's a cement bed, white walls, security cameras, which I'm uh, security cameras are going to break up the monotony of a little, little bit because they're going to be probably going to be black. The lenses are going to be black. Oh, we can get so, frosted glass though to make it look like it's white. You know, like the two way kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could put it be. Yeah, you know, yeah. I guess that would work. Guarantee, guarantee, they'd have some form of yeah something. You know, it would be a slightly different texture, but at the same time, some of the door. That's what yeah, the bed, you know. But, there's no windows, uh, barred doors, which again seems like it might let in a little bit other than just white. And the cells were aligned next to each other so that there could be no interaction between the prisoners. Uh, some of these prisoners would become very ill, uh, physically and mentally, but of course, denied medical treatment. <laughs> like, oh, I'm sick, throwing up, I'm hallucinating. Like, okay, have fun with that. And then they just kind of leave you. I'd say they wouldn't even say have fun with that. They just literally ignore you. Yeah. Actually, they, they would just ignore you because you weren't allowed to have interaction with anybody, including the guards. All day and night, again, bright lights would be in their cells. Uh, I don't know. Venezuela, I mean, Venezuela might even be a step below Iran as far as advancement with the way everything has been there over the years. So uh, it might not be as cohesive a unit. Mm. as what they have there but same thing bright lights in your cell all day all night you have no time no idea what time it is um some of the people have tried to kill themselves and others some uh others suffered from vomiting diarrhea hallucinations 
Um, and according to the NGO Justice and Process, uh, this makes the prisoners plead guilty to crimes that they are accused of, whether they did them or not. I wonder if they were sick of the rooms or the really like, cheesy, overused, James Bond villain-esque style <laughs> name for the place. Like, you know, it's, it's just, it's like lazy writing. Like, you know, it's just Le Tumba. Welcome to Le Tumba. And it, uh, then it's just, da-da-da! And the camera pans <laughs> out, and it's just, you're in a hole down underneath. It, it just pans out, and it's just an office building that you're underneath. It's inside a volcano. That's where you have to have it. That's where Ooh. the has to be. Inside a volcano shaped for skull. <laughs> just, uh, yeah. The skull, like like uh, Dr. Evil pans out and it's just Dr. Evil's face on the side of a mountain. Yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> Welcome to La Tumba. <laughs> so so where does... Call La Tumba into our D&D game. Have to. Yes. And you have to say it like that. Welcome to La Tumba. And then I'll go. Da, da, da. Uh, not to make too much light of people being tortured here, but it is a fucking stupid name, Venezuela. Come on. It is. Man, it's, come place. on. Yeah. Come up with something, something better. Something a little bit more evil. I mean, we have Alcatraz, which technically uh, Alcatraz is Spanish for Pelican. Really? I found that. didn't know yeah. that. That's, yeah. it's, a, it's a pretty kind of opposite name to that. Like, yeah, you think of the word, and it, you actually think of visually of what it is. It's probably just yeah. word association, but yeah. I don't know. It, it's it's um kind of like calling a a villain taser or laser or blazer or one of those. You know, it's uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm Taser Face. Yeah, yeah, Taser Face. Yeah, that's the thing. That's not your real. That's not your real name. Taser Face. Yeah. <laughs> so where did all this start? You might you know wonder who could come up with something so dark and depraved as extreme sensory deprivation and psychologically scarring a person for life just to get some information or to turn them against their own country the americans <laughs> the fucking cia that too america Fuck the yeah. modern day kings of torture especially back in the 50s and the 60s i mean they really had it down to a t because not only did they have no idea what they're doing, but they had no idea what the ramifications would have been. Yeah. Yeah, sure. It was it was CIA. Yeah, it was the uh, MK Ultra. It was CIA. MK was Ultra. It? Yes. Yes. Project Artichoke. Yeah. Let's pump people fi- let's yeah. let's pump people full of LSD and then throw them off yeah. a roof. See what happens. Now, yeah. uh, <laughs> near the beginning of the Cold War, the CIA began researching a way to replicate mind control tactics used by countries that were unfriendly to America, we'll say. Uh, they knew of American soldiers in, in Korean POW camps that had been uh, delivering anti-U.S. and pro-communist statements, which spurred the idea of brainwashing. Now, all these they would they would say oh they they would give them a bunch of stupid untrue intel on us and then the north koreans would say okay and they'd send them back to america and america would be like i only said what i said because they they forced me so they oh. weren't they weren't they didn't mean it so it's not really brainwashing is people are literally doing whatever they can to survive yeah, uh, of course yeah but, of course, the CIA looked at it and goes, oh, we can control what people think. <laughs> so let's do that. So it was led by actually <laughs> American, <laughs> Canadian, and British officials to secretly, meet, to secretly meet in June of 1951 at the Montreal Ritz-Carlton. Now, their famed psychologist Donald Hebb suggested removing external stimuli from the POWs as a way to lessen opposition to indoctrination. So they began to experiment. Hebb published his findings in the Canadian Journal of Psychology, though he disguised it as a study about the effects of living a sedentary and monotonous lifestyle. You can't really put it in a magazine and be like, we tortured these people. Yeah, yeah. Be like, look what these people. Th-. So you got to turn it to look what all these people did for science. They volunteered. God, sorry, I'm just thinking on it. Like, <laughs> I'm absorbing the information here. So it's, he conducted. 
he conducted a study on sensory deprivation that he published in a 1949 that he published in 1949 in the book titled The Organization of Behavior, where he had experienced visual deprivation on rats. That's kind of where he got uh, the idea. He's like, well, I did this this type of thing on rats. The next step up is people. Has to be people. Like, yeah, yeah, of course. You, know, you, you shouldn't you sit be there and look at a lot of bored rats. Of course, you're going to go, oh, rats were bored. They're most, more susceptible to go to the cheese when I wanted them to go to the cheese. Therefore, and who's the close? So who's person. the closest thing to rats? Male graduate students. Oh Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> so he paid twenty two of them, uh, twenty dollars a day, which was good money back then. Twenty bucks in uh, nineteen fifty one. Yeah. 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 Uh, to voluntarily participate in a stimuli removal study at McGill University Medical Center in Montreal, Canada. Oh, sorry. So it's Canadian dollars. Well, it was it was ran mostly by the CIA, and it was it was paid mostly by uh, us. But didn't want to do this here, so we did it in Canada. Cost an awful lot less money. Yeah, $20 Canadians are, 50, 50 cents. <laughs> Canadians and the British were in on it too because you know we're all allies and everybody wants the same uh, kind of intel. Yeah. I suppose. But the CIA didn't really trust anybody. So I, I would imagine that there are certain things kept close to the vest. So these subjects were placed in individual rooms and deprived of all their senses. They wore goggles and padding over their ears to strip them of sight and hearing. And they also had cardboard on their arms and gloves on their hands to diminish their sense of touch. They were only allowed breaks for food and other necessities. Their other stimulation came from an air conditioning unit that constantly gave off white noise. So it's just that constant hum of an air conditioner in the background right. that eventually, I guess just a regular hum won't do anything, but if there starts to be like a click in it or mm. like if like the water is draining out of it or something and you hear, you know, that would fucking get to me after a while. So here, here's a question for you. Is this effectively, this, oh, Sorry, I already know this is the answer. Don't <laughs> watch it again. This whole concept is effectively what um, everything that Elle from Stranger Things went through. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you know, pretty much. Her mother was part of MK Ultra. Yeah, and everything that she went through was because they found a couple of kids with cognitive abilities. Her being yeah. one of them. Uh huh. And so that's. So I was going to ask the question. I was going to, well, no, I know it was for a fact because I only watched it again last week. So we're catching up for the next season. So that's that's kind of yeah. I don't know if that can help put into perspective yeah. some people. Yeah, some the stuff that was. Yeah, yeah. Think of Eleven from Stranger Things. Yeah, um, I go through all the maybe, sound deprivation yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and the then rooms of course, are in. If, if it has flashbacks of that when they go into the rooms and they're completely white as well. So they might most have them like trying to have them with zero stimulants in order to. Yeah, and then and then she goes in that room in her head, I guess, and just that got like that two inches of water on the ground that she's walking around in. Um, and then of course they they try to ruin the whole series by sending her to like Chicago or some shit to meet up. That's only for an episode. So good. Which is it's though that's the weirdest thing though. It's like let's let's one episode. Let's just put her with a bunch of other kids that have. Ah, she'd be in the next season. So. I was expecting her to try and call upon her sister towards the end of that season. I, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it was kind of a bit stupid. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. This isn't just uh, Things podcast we're recording that next week. <laughs> <laughs> Weirder things. This study was supposed to last six weeks, but most of the subject only lasted a few days. Now, one of the partners in the study, Woodburn Heron, wrote, quote, nearly all of them reported that the most striking thing about the experience was that they were unable to think clearly about anything for any length of time and that their thought processes seemed to be affected in other ways. Now, prior to the experiment, the students took a test assessing their mental capacity and their beliefs, you know, get that control. After coming out of isolation, voluntarily, the test subjects underwent cognitive tests that showed that they were temporarily mentally impaired. 
testing proved a decrease in the student's ability to complete simple mathematic equations and other elementary cognitive functions. The students also answered questions about their thoughts on the existence of ghosts. After two or three days of isolation, those previously opposed to the belief in the supernatural had open minds about the possibility that spirits are real. I, that part I did not see coming. The rest of it, the rest of it was like I can see, but from just being solitary, all of a sudden now you're gonna say this is pre drugs. Yeah, no, there was nothing in there about them being dosed with LSD. Now again, CIA funded, so there's a good chance that LSD was just being pumped through the airways, uh, but nothing in there about them being drugged. That's messed up. That's, yeah, that's kind of cool though, as well. Like in some ways, it's you have to wonder what in God's name. It's it's yeah. it's a weird. It that's a weird side effect. You, I I don't I wouldn't think that I wouldn't even think to test for that. About well, let's see if they believe in ghosts after they get out of there. It's like, what do you plan yeah, on yeah. doing? Standing in the corner in a sheet with holes cut out of it, just boo. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I mean, what the fuck? It was probably the fucking uh, the AC unit pretty much. God's time. <laughs> you know, you're like, who shit? It's a ghost. So, um, so yeah, so okay, so their eyes and ears are covered, so it's not white. So technically, this wouldn't be white room torture. This is just kind of where the whole idea of sensory deprivation and solitary confinement kind of came to be. We Mm -hmm. will cover more of this. um, On the Stranger Things podcast. On on the Stranger Things podcast, (laughs) yes. But I just felt like uh, we should get the information out there about where this this whole type of thing started. Um, Now, there's also talks of the process being used by the British on the IRA and the U.S. in Guantanamo Bay, uh, he pointed at me when he said, "Are you all right?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, I do not remember the Irish Republican Army. <laughs> no, but you know who they are. Oh yeah, of course. You, you, you've heard of them. But yeah, yeah. Uh, the and uh, dark ops prisons in Thailand, but again, most of that's dark room or blackout torture. And uh, I also know who people from Thailand are. If that's anything. <laughs> yeah, well, I kind of pointed at you when I said Thailand. <laughs> I heard about the things that the British doing it to the IRA, all right. You know, it's, yeah. Um, yeah, they'd kind of torture us in every other way possible. Yeah. At that stage. So, you know, they may as well you know, try that out too. Another way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Because just one step above a uh, male graduate student, you go rat, male graduate student, Irish. Yeah. So, well, they might as well test it on you too. No, like you spent 800 years of tyranny. You know, mm-hmm. standing on our necks. So they may as well stick us in a room with nothing for a while. Yeah. Not even a single potato. <laughs> oh, oh no, they'd probably give you only potatoes, but no skin. So it'd still just be white. Uh, that wouldn't be torture. The boys would be okay with that. You Boom, think so? Fine. Yeah, yeah. Boom, fine. None of those full Irish breakfasts every morning. Oh, okay. anyway. But. <laughs> Oh, they gave us a tomato, <laughs> the tomato, whatever way you want to pronounce it. What? But what if it's what if it's okay? So you get the mashed potatoes, but it's one of those weird like they're trying to make it healthy. So it's instead of actual potato, it's cauliflower mashed potatoes. I burn the country to the ground. <laughs> no, no, that's not that's not potato then. So I saw I saw that when we were in the store. So so my our our daughter is a pescatarian. Uh, she was yeah. vegetarian for a while, and then she realized that she missed eating shrimp. So now she's a pescatarian. Like, what the fuck ever? I don't care. But there's oh, one yes. there's one section in the store that sells. They got the gluten free, the vegan, the vegetarian shit all together. So we're yeah. looking at uh, what we can get her, and I see mashed potatoes. It's like okay, made from cauliflower. Why mashed potatoes aren't meat? You d- and they're not. They're they're 
you don't need to change a mashed potato to something else so people can eat it. It's still just fucking, it's potatoes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the, only, the only thing you think of is if people just don't want starch or something. But like, it's they not don't, like don't it's, fucking it's not eat mashed potatoes. potatoes. I don't, yeah, it doesn't even taste the same. Like, no, <laughs> it, nowhere near. Like, it'd be different if there's, um, uh, if the celeriac stuff like you know I mean like, I've, I've seen people using celeriac to replace it for potato we have some i don't know mashes. i have no idea what that is but um, i don't know what that is. It, it it's not exactly the same thing but like it's closer than cauliflower would be yeah they want to yeah. do everything with cauliflower let's let's yeah they said they had cauliflower rice so just yeah. have regular fucking rice i, I <laughs> <laughs> Just why do you have to take why do you have to take a vegetable and turn it into something else when the other that, thing I, you're turning it into two, is I vegetable? Have, I have two bags of that in the freezer, so I won't. You have cauliflower <laughs> rice. <laughs> it's actually good really to add into things like stir fries and stuff. It's actually pretty handy. Why don't you just cut up cut up cauliflower and put it in there instead of no because, no because you get like the on the separate broken up bits and so the thing is though is that when you have certain people who don't like to eat such things is that. Then okay. he gets it into it. You know? I mean, I so, I get it for people that don't want the starch and they still want, you know, the texture or or, or, or something. Yeah, there's loads I of get it. you could do it instead. But it's still <laughs> you know, it's, sell it, that. It don't, is, but don't yeah. sell that in the vegetarian section. Like like, ooh, look, you you don't have to have potatoes anymore section. if you're vegetarian. Put it just put it with the rest of the fucking frozen vegetables. Put it with the rest of the vegetables. Here, those just sections are called like the the free from thing or so you know so my guess would be free from common sense or something like that like you know like <laughs> free from taste yeah you know yeah here's a, you know, a cauliflower instead of good old potato for you it's just ridiculous well on on those english <laughs> anyway, on, and, well no assholes. that <laughs> that is a very american thing let's take this food and turn it into something else because we don't that's icky that's a very american thing let's take this food leave it as it is and claim yeah. it to be our own yeah like most 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 food over there it yeah. either comes from germany or canada as far as i've seen it's pretty much either either german uh, or canadian. it's it's german canadian or mexican and then oh, yeah just, sorry yes yeah, yeah mexican, and then mexican. and then we we uh put uh tex in front of the oh, mex. Yeah, tex. yeah yeah tex, yeah so it's tex yeah. mex which is as American as it can get. It's as American as apple pie, which is invented in Germany. It's a, American as a walking taco. You ever so have you ever had a walking taco? No. So you just you take a what? Yeah. Oh no, it, and it's it's very American. So you take a yeah. bag of Fritos. You have free. You have you have Fritos in Ireland? Before you have an equivalent. Of, hold on a sec. Let, let me Google them real quick. How do you spell it? I T O S. Is it F R I? T O S. I don't think there's. Uh, I don't know if there's an E or not. I know. I know what they are. I've had them. Uh-huh. You can't really get them here, but pretty sure you can get an equivalent here. Oh, like my we wife have something similar of different flavor called. I think Quavers would be the closest thing that we'd have. <laughs> My my wife wants to have a list from you and you uh, from you guys about what American foods you want. She said we'll we'll package it up and send it to you. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. yeah. Look up quavers there. That, that'd be the closest thing we have to cheese flavor. That's quavers. Like, quavers. Q A V E R S. Q A. Not a. Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought you said Q Q A. I was like, did. what? <laughs> what? I probably Q- did. I meant to say Q U A. So my apologies. They don't. I guarantee you, they don't have the same texture to them. Though these are kind of like um, quavers chips. Are they corn? Yeah, uh, no. See, the thing is, I know just by looking at those Fritos exactly what they're like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I know exactly what quavers. Oh, okay. Like. They're, they're they not do the exact same. They do look. They do kind of look the same. Yeah, they look physically kind of look the same, but they'll. The quavers things I think are a little bit more on the uh, p- puffy side. More like, I mean, yeah, I so a little bit more like Cheetos. You have Cheetos it, over yeah, there, somewhere, somewhere, yeah, yeah. So somewhere in okay. between, yeah. Um, not quite as much as that, yeah, but um, not as, okay. Not like like I'd consider. Let's say if you're to take that scale, like they'd be closer towards Cheetos, whereas the other okay. be closer to Doritos. Well, why? 
comparison? Yeah, there are yeah. Doritos right there. Yeah. yeah. We will. Okay. Well, we'll throw a thing of Fritos in there for you when we send you a, a care package. Um, but no, you you take a you take a, a bag of Fritos, whatever flavor you want. I'm fond of the chili cheese, but you know whatever. Um, you cut the side of it off. And then you just dump all of your toppings for a taco in massive quantities into the side of the bag. And then you just eat the taco with a fork as you walk around. It's a walking taco. <laughs> you can literally get them uh, anywhere. They, uh, uh, st- uh, food trucks sell them. Uh, they, when my, the track meets here in town when we go. They sell them there. You just see, so basically you, just see. you get a bag and you tear open the side and dump all the stuff into the bag. Yeah. And so and yeah bag it doesn't have to be free, like, those. It can be, it's it kind can of be. smart, though, I'm saying, like using the the bag from it as like the vessel. Oh, yeah. Free. Well, if there's one thing Americans have figured out, it's the most convenient way to eat anything. Crap food. <laughs> because cause that's all we do. We're just we're just nine layers of grease and, and ooze as we walk around and eat. It's like when uh, when the French see how we have our coffee, they they fucking have a stroke because we just go get massive things of coffee and drink it as we walk around instead of taking the yeah, time yeah. To, sit, to sit down and and in, enjoy the experience of. It's all, I, I kind of float both ways with that, you know. I I especially when I was a smoker though, I love nothing more than just sit there and chill out with coffee and cigarettes yeah. and stuff like that though. But um, yeah, certainly. I kind of get that. Like, I mean, I love to get a cup of coffee and just sometimes just chill with it. Just and sit out. Other times, so yeah, it's a it's the one on the go. Then other than that, yeah. So and I see it both sides. I definitely more, agree more to French on that one, though. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Well, in any case, white room torture is a psychological. We, we went way off topic. Uh, white room torture is a psychological, <laughs> psychological misery which does not spare the prisoner even after getting out of prison. Sometimes the suffering goes on endlessly, and the prison the person never restores back to normal. Psychiatric sessions may help to some extent, but complete mental recovery is a distant dream for for most former prisoners. Once one becomes a prisoner of white room torture, he or she never truly restores to normal again. Unfortunately, the desolation lasts for life. And that is all I have for white room torture. Which I'm sure there's plenty of other stuff out there. But there's yeah, people yeah. people don't like to post a lot of shit about torture on the internet. So sometimes it's I wonder hard to why. I don't I know. Yeah, I remember like when we first started talking about doing this and was actually the very first subject that you brought up was to do a white room torture. And I remember looking yeah. at a couple of a couple of very short videos, but it's like I noticed um a video series out there to do with some similar to what we're talking about, but it's extreme quick snippets of things to do with it. And I'm like, there has to be more about this somewhere. Yeah. Like, you know I mean this can't just be it. And I like, I remember reading a decent bit about it and um, I would say but, if if you're out there and you want to know more about this type of shit, um, go to YouTube and look up the infographics show. Yeah, uh, they I do. Maybe they, I watched uh, little cartoons. The cartoon. Yeah. yeah yes, yeah, yeah. they yeah, yeah. are amazing. And, and uh, yeah. I, I love them. Don't, I've got a I got a lot of research. Also go sending all of our listenership that way. <laughs> I got a lot of research from. We're there. better. So. After you, you watch potatoes and Fritos. <laughs> <laughs> After you listen to us, go check if out you want the, the abridged version, the last 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. If you want the 30 second abridged version, go to them. If you want the one that's talk about how the English um completely destroyed our country and uh it ate all of our Fritos, then yeah. If you know, if you want information, go to the infographic show. Things, which, if you want a if you want a recipe for a walking taco, you come to torture. So uh, before we uh, end this episode, uh, we need to go back and talk about our very first episode, uh, Bassination. I completely forgot a part. So apparently, um, so we don't get you know emails about how you know we totally fucked up. Uh, apparently, what a Bassination actually is is blinding, but it's blinding by holding white or red hot metal plates up to somebody's eyeballs. Until mm-hmm. they until they go blind. Also, the heat is not touching it against it. Yeah, is it, it, the, it or pressing it in, or it's not actually pressing against it. It's holding it like centimeters so it's like, it's away. It's like trying to use the light and so on the back, kind of. Yeah. yeah. 
So actually, yeah, there's something I should also clarify on that because I know for a fact somebody's going to say something. When I was yeah. making a comparison between the condition I have in my eyes and all that stuff, I wasn't by no means saying I understand what they're going through. By, by <laughs> I just meant I know what it's like to look up at the sun. I've missed an awful lot. Like and it damaged me a lot because my God, like even with how dull it is right now, I went outside. You can see the light, like how bright it is outside. It's not that bright uh, here. Yeah. That it that would torture me. No doubt that like, you know, it would really hurt. So yeah. I don't think there's a lot of people who have gone through that torture that are either listening to this show or complaining about well, how no, dare you my grandfather went through that day. <laughs> Back when he's liberating America from the English, you know. My was, my grandfather, thirty nine times over, was Samson, and he had his eyes plucked out of his head. And it's not fair that you would say that the light hurts your eyes. Yeah. But I just wanted to cover because we covered ev- all the other types of blindings except for the one that act technically is a bastination. So, but I didn't cover it because I couldn't find anything on it. That's all right, be fair. Of, yeah, but yeah. Could, you said to me that that's what we we're going to cover, and I didn't find that. You know, yeah, so. all we found was a fucking death metal band that we couldn't read the fucking name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're so bad. Ugh. No offense, but they're just yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that they're, they're my, fans. Not my, they're not my, as we'd say here, cup on Teddy. If guys from a, a Bassination, if you are fans, um, you can uh, you can tweet us or DM us on Instagram at torturepod, or you can email us torturepod at gmail dot com. See what I did there? See how I fit it all in? Yeah. And as well as that, we can do some form of um, uh, collaboration for merch. Yeah. <laughs> to do the torture and the, the cat yeah, scratch. Like, well, yeah. yeah, well, it'll be like, was it uh, as featured on <laughs> the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> they can write us a new theme song where nobody understands what they're saying. That's exactly. Well, uh, so just so everybody knows, the credits for all our reference material can be found in our show notes. Just go down underneath where you're listening, and pretty much everything that we've talked about should be listed somewhere. You can click on it. Go find it for yourself if you don't believe us. You think we're a bunch of liars. Um, you can rate us, review us, subscribe, follow wherever you listen. It uh, it really helps get the word out. It really helps. You know, It'll give us advertisers and we get money in, and then maybe we'll be able to find more time to do more shows. Well, that's the whole point. To do more shows. So, all right. Well, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time. See ya. Slon. <laughs> what? Did you say slon? Irish for goodbye. <laughs> yes, Irish for goodbye. <laughs> okay.